Hi and welcome to part two of the story sequences training that I'm doing here uh, each Friday over three Fridays. Today we are talking about how to connect deeply with our ideal client um, and also give a great first impression as well so we can uh, show our value and why we are the right um, solution to their problem as well. So I guess first of all uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was not uh, it's not about the number of people in your audience but about how deep the relationships are with those people. We can have an email list with thousands and thousands of people on it but if you don't connect uh, to who they are and, and, and have a deeper relationship then it kind of uh, defeats the purpose if they're not going to then take the next step with you. So we're going to focus on ensuring that they do take the, the next step with you today because we'll be looking at first of all what is the opt-in offer or the thing that we can give them um, to in ensure that they become part of our community and that we can continue the conversation with them and then the second part is how do we give a great first impression when we do create that so one of the other things I wanted to talk about today um, is yeah I guess looking at how do we show up great? So I guess a story for me um, stems back to my nan who used to always talk about the royal family um, as if they were our family. She'd talk about what Fergie was up to, what Di and Charles were up to and she'd talk about them as if they were my uncles and aunties and cousins. Um, and I think I got pulled into that world, into the, the uh, British royal family's world as if as if they were my family and I guess we need to think about our what we're creating as far as our business and our community in the same way we need to pull people into our world so that they come in they're excited to find out what's next um, and they feel part of the community as well or part of the family so we want to focus on uh, that uh, as well today how do we encourage that or how do we create that sort of atmosphere for our community so a couple of points, I've got notes on, um, uh, on a, another screen over here so I will look over there every now and again. Um, but a couple of points is we want to create um, content that uh, creates a two-way conversation. So whether that's doing video, whether it's asking people in an email to reply to you, uh, whether it's getting people on calls, we want to find ways to create those two-way conversations. So that's part one. And part two is that we want to um, make sure that we are consistently having conversations. There's no point just showing up once or they find you once and then it disappears and they, they never come back to you again. We want them to keep coming back to you. And one of the greatest ways to do that is through your email. When we look at things like social media, and I know you've heard this before, but if we're building our um, audience solely on something like um, Facebook or on Twitter or, or LinkedIn, or Instagram, those things can be shut down in a moment, um, they can be taken away from us. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes of these big companies as well. So we need to be really conscious of uh, creating a community that we actually own ourselves. So we have names and email addresses that we can uh, use going forward. So that's why an email list is just so powerful because you're building it for you, you're not building it for somebody else's platform. So. Or I'm not saying that uh, social media social media is a bad thing. Here I am doing a video on social media. So it does have value and it's a great way to meet your um, ideal client where they are, if they're on Facebook or YouTube or uh, wherever it happens to be. That's excellent. But then make sure that the next step is encouraging them to be part of your community. So we need to, of course, uh, create an opt-in offer because we're we're trying to get somebody to sign up to your newsletter list is really difficult these days. We treat our email email address, um, you know, with our life. We guard it. We don't want to give it away to anyone. So we need to think about um, someone's email list like as if they're paying you money. Um, so what you give away needs to be worth the investment of their email list, or sorry, of their email address. So what are the things that we can create? You may already have an opt-in offer on your website or in some blog posts. And one of the things that I hear often is it doesn't work. You know, you've created this great thing 
and nobody's signing up to it and why are they not signing up to it? One of the big reasons is you've created something that your ideal client actually doesn't want. Now if we go back to last week's session where we were talking about meeting our ideal client where they are, um, also tapping into what their story is, often we haven't thought about that. What is their story and why do they care? Now if you go back to my ideal client, um, someone who has great big visions, wonderful at starting lots of ideas, has a bit of bright shiny object syndrome where they'll start an idea and then they come up with another great idea and they want to go and start that one and so they never actually complete projects. Or they'll start projects and they just leave it on virtual shelves and they never get to see the light of day. So for me I know that following through is a big thing and the structure side of things. They're great with the big vision but the actual what are the specific things that I need to do to get this thing completed is the thing that they struggle with. Marketing, getting it out there. So again, one of my, my opt-in offers is a 12-month marketing plan because it makes perfect sense to the person that I am um, targeting or the person that I most want to work with. So you need to go back to that personality profiling that we did and also what is their story. Um, so my ideal client, there's no point me giving them 100 ways to come up with great ideas for, um, you know, for their next offer because they already know how to do that. They're already great at it. It's not a problem for them. So I'm not giving them what they most need to overcome the thing that's frustrating them the most, which is actually getting something out there into the world and getting people to um, purchase it. So you need to think of things like that. And I would, um, I often, when I'm working with clients, the first thing they say to me is, should it be a PDF or should it be a three-part video series or should it be um, an audio training? I would not even think about that at this point. And look, it is important to understand who your ideal client is and I guess the way that they like content delivered, but never start there. Always start with the content first because that's what you're selling. That's the thing that you're being of service to your client via is the content, not the platform that it's delivered on. So think about for yourself, what is the content first? Worry about the delivery of it afterwards. Um, some other points that I have written um, down again is so obviously their story and struggle. Um, so an example, I think a good example that I can give you is and that I've seen out there in the, the market is someone who's giving away um, you know, 10 different resources and tools that you can use to take great photos. Now, if the ideal client is a family who wants to have portraits done for their home, you know, to, to show around the walls of their home, then that's not the best opt-in offer for them. Rather, three ways to rock your next family portrait session would be far more valuable because, of course, you're, you're finding out ways that um, you can show up as your best self in the next photo session you have. Now, if you think about the, the, the train of thought that the mother might have, she's thinking, okay, I'm about to have photos. Now, if these photos aren't, don't turn out great, I don't wanna put them on the wall. But I know that my husband is not gonna invest that level of money and allow me to just put them in the garage. So he's gonna want them to go up and then I'm gonna be mortified every time my friends and family come and look at the photos and they're just not who we are and, and uh, you know I'm not proud of them. And so I'm talking myself out of wanting to get family portraits now. So you need to make sure that your opt-in offer is uh, tapping into what the story is that's going on inside their head so you're giving them what they want. Now I know from experience doing um, opt-ins for myself and for clients that things like um, templates, checklists, really simple things, uh, guides as well, um, anything that's step by step are highly valuable to people because it simplifies things. Now again if I look at my ideal client they've got lots of big things going on in their head. Um, they don't want another big stream of information that they've then got to process. They want someone to simplify it and make it easy for them. So also think about things like that. I know those opt-ins opt -ins do particularly well. Um, so think about what opt-in you've already maybe created and have you created something that's, that people go, yes, that's what I need right now. It taps into the story that's going on inside my head. It simplifies things for me. Um, so those things are really important as well. Um, there was another thing I was going to share that I just thought of and it's gone. Oh, we also want to make sure that 
um, the content is still valuable. Even though it might be simplified, it still needs to give them an aha or a win once they've consumed it as well. So we still need to make sure that it's um, highly valuable to them. Now, one of the ways, you know, we're creating this content, but how is that creating a deeper um, connection with somebody? Now, it depends on the type of opt-in you're creating. If you can't do it inside of the opt-in itself, you can do it inside the welcome email, which I'm going to get to next. But we need to make sure that people know who we are and why they should care. Now, the story that you share about yourself shouldn't be all about um, how great you are because they don't really care in, in all honesty. What we need to focus on instead is how does what I know, my experience, my skills, my knowledge, the product that I've created, how does that help them? How is it of value to their world? And that's when people's ears prick up and they want to listen because they suddenly understand how you can make their world better. And so that's what you need to focus on when you're telling your story is why should they care about my story? Why is my story important to them? So um, if you can put that, often if you're doing a PDF opt-in, you can put that at the beginning on the first page before you go into the content. If you're doing audio or video, you can actually tell your story at the beginning of the training before you get into it. Um, I have seen people do it at the end as well. Um, I would probably prefer to do it at the beginning because you're trying to sell on the idea of why they should keep listening. Um, why should they be listening to you? So there's some things to think about with your um, opt-in offer. Um, uh, one of the other things uh, that I've also um, something to think about as you're creating yours is what do you need to demonstrate to your ideal client to get them to take the next step? Now again, with my 12-month marketing plan, of course, um, that's a piece of content that once they've got the plan, now they need to know how to implement it. So how do I demonstrate um, you know, that I'm the right um, person for them? It's because I've simplified things for them to start with, but also then I'm opening a door to the next offer for them as well. So you need to know with this opt-in offer, what is the next step? What is the thing that I want them to do uh, once they've consumed this piece of content? So that's really important as well. So hopefully this has given you some ideas for your opt-in. If you're still a bit confused, one of the things that's worked for me is to even go and have a look at what I get traffic for on my website. So I'll go through and have a look um, at keywords that um, Google Analytics is showing me, particular blog posts that are very popular, and they become great inspiration because this is what people are already Googling to try and find a solution to a problem. And so I can show up with a really highly valuable piece of content that they just need to pay their email address um, in exchange for that opt-in offer. So that's how we um, make sure that we give a great first impression and we can connect a bit more deeply to who they are and they start to remember who we are and want to come back. Now, of course, one of the things, the next part is the welcome email. And to tie into our opt-in offer, I would encourage you to deliver the opt-in offer in the first email, not on the thank you page. Now, the reason, reason for that is that we want to encourage people to keep opening our emails to know that when they open it, there's great value in there. And so by doing it in the first email, we are um, already starting to, it's a terrible way to think about it, but you're training people um, to do what you want, you know, to, to in, um, open your emails and so that that becomes a habit for them that they see your name and they go, oh, I've got to open this because I remember there was something great in the last one. So um, I'm going to go through it next week through the access framework. But today I just want to give you the A in access, which is aspiration or problem. And that's our welcome email. So what we're doing and our goal of this welcome email is one, we need to make sure that um, we... Uh, introduce who we are and what we're what we're giving them as well. So thank you so much or congratulations for downloading the 12-month marketing plan. Um, then we need to go into, you know, you know, I'm Kelly O'Brien. I'm an online marketing social media coach. I might give a bit of an intro. Um, but then I need to go into a positioning statement. And that positioning statement allows them, again, reinforces, and especially if you haven't been able to do this in the opt-in itself, but it reinforces who you are and why they should care about who you are. 
So I might say that after 16 years in journalism, I know the value of storytelling to your marketing and how powerful it can be to ensure that people lean in and listen um, to what you've got to say. It allows them to um, want to take the next step with you and, you know, whatever else whatever the thing happens to be. But that would be something along the lines of a positioning statement. How's my past experience or what I do? Um, how can that help you? So um, that would be the next part of it. And the last part of your welcome email that's really important is to actually deliver on the promise that you gave them when they very first landed on your opt-in offer landing page. And that is to deliver the opt-in offer. So whether that's a PDF, whether it's an audio, whether it's a five-day challenge in a Facebook group, or whether it's a three-part training, there's so many different types of opt-in offers. And I'll put some um, links to different um, resources that I've created that might help you come up with some of those opt-in offers and different ways that you can think about it. Um, I'll put that in the comments for you to read. Um, and if you've got any, um, anything that you've been thinking about and you want some feedback, please just pop that in the comments as well. But our welcome email is really important because it sets everything up for the rest of our access framework. It ensures that they want to keep uh, keep opening your emails. If you don't deliver on your promise that you had on the opt-in in that welcome email, they're not going to open the next one. So it becomes really highly valuable. So just to recap again uh, today, look for ways to create two-way conversations and to ensure that you're creating a consistent conversation or a conversation that keeps uh, happening long into the future by creating um, an opt-in offer that is highly valuable to your ideal client that deepens the relationship that you might be having already on social media or maybe it's the first um, encounter they have with you. This is like going on a first date with you if we go back to that sales funnel uh, from last week. This is the first date, the first impression. Do they want to go on the next date with you? And also then make sure that the first introduction, the proper this is who I am and, um, and this is why I think we'd be a great match um, to continue having a relationship going forward. That's where our welcome email comes in. So if you've got any questions, please pop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. But hopefully now you get a clearer picture on how to create a highly valuable opt-in offer that's actually going to work when people come to your website. It's what they most want and what they're happy to um, to pay for if they had to pay for it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week to dive deep into the access framework to make sure that we keep nurturing people and we can invite them to the next step in our sales funnel which is of course inviting them to work with us. Thanks again and I'll see you next week.